Is my big dog ready to come back? Um, Vince, seriously, I wish you'd, wish you'd quit calling me. Who's my big dog? I am. I can't hear you! I am. That's a good big dog! Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this episode of The Guido Goes Off. As always, I thank you folks for watching. A uh, lot to get into, so I'm just going to start talking. Okay, uh, the first thing, uh, I've been wanting to talk about this uh, for quite a while, never seemed to be able to get to it. But now I'm going to be able to talk about it, and that is everything surrounding the huge match set up uh, for... Wrestle Kingdom 12, and that is the match between Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. Um, it was set up at um, the Power Struggle event, uh, New Japan's Power Struggle event, um, after Kenny Omega uh, won his main event match. I, I forget who it was against. I'm sorry. Um, but then a video showed up, and it started playing Fozzie's Judas. And then also you see Chris Jericho talking about all these great wrestlers, and they all claim to be the best in the world, and they said he, he's still here. And he said, but then there's, but there's one I, I need to face. And he holds up a picture of Kenny Omega setting, uh, challenging him at Wrestle Kingdom 12, which of course will be um, next year, January 4th, at the Tokyo Dome. Um, and then Kenny Omega uh, responded in Japanese that he accepted and ever since then, pe people have been losing their collective shit over the fact that we're going to see this, this basically this dream match. Um, I mean, the two of them have been going back and forth on Twitter, and no one thought anything would come of it. But it, it, it did, and, and it looks like this is still, this is going to happen. A lot of people, though, were wondering about Jericho's status with WWE. Um... Now, I, we had heard everything and are still hearing everything about whether or not this was going to, ha um, like, Jericho's status with uh, WWE. Uh, there's people that said he did not have a contract with WWE uh, currently, as he signs short-term contracts and extends them as he sees fit. Because, of course, Jericho's a very busy man between... All of his stuff with, of course, Fozzy. Um, he does some, you know, game show hosting, TV show hosting. Um, he even had a little show on in the Canadian Broadcasting uh, Corporation. Um, I saw some of it on YouTube. I thought I laughed my ass off. But um, you know, we had heard that he was, it was possible he wasn't under contract, which was probably the only way this match was going to happen. Then we heard, um, I want to say it was Thursday or Friday, uh, that according to Tokyo Press, uh, someone within New Japan said Jericho was still under contract with WWE, and then, well, this match could be in jeopardy again. Uh, but we are now hearing reports that while some in WWE aren't very happy uh, with Jericho, Vince has given his blessing, and this match is going to happen. Um, people, A lot of people are believing that, of course, the reason why Kenny Omega has been on the short list of people they have been trying to get in WWE. Um, of course, he is one of the hottest acts right now. Uh, I think he was, he was easily in the top ten of the PWI 500. He's wildly popular. Um, and his contract is up. Last year, there was, last year there was a lot of speculation he would be in the Royal Rumble because his contract was going to be up uh, in New Japan. However, he did sign an extension, um, and that extension uh, is good uh, through um, the middle of January this year. I think it ends on, um, just shortly before the Rumble again. So, it could be that um, WWE is still interested in signing Omega. 
Um, they're wanting to do this match as a gesture of good faith. And, you know, it's could. And I'll be honest, I'm going to be up. Um, I really don't know what the future holds, but I'm going to be up at 2.30 in the morning here, my local time. Um, a couple friends of mine are, are taking the day off, and we're going to watch it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get New Japan World. We're going to watch this, uh, this match because I think it'll be excellent. Now, um, while, I'm, while I'm at this point, we did hear that they are possibly in WWE... Uh, going to do a match from Wrestle Kingdom 10, and that is, um, it looks like the possibility of setting up AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura uh, to have a match at WrestleMania um, 34 in in New Orleans. Um, if anybody had saw, seen their match from Wrestle Kingdom 10, yeah, these guys these guys can go and and can put on a great match, um, and I would definitely definitely be looking forward. Uh, to see that um, again, so um, so for those of you that don't know, Wrestle Kingdom 12 every year January 4th. So so this year, this um, 2018 will be no different. Um, if you go to New Japan World, um, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you speak English. So click on it has have English translations. Thank you, thank you. Moving on. Okay. Um, uh, next thing I was going to talk about, and that is the uh, wild and crazy situation um, involving uh, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and them getting kicked off of the tour. Um, as many people know, last week, um, after SmackDown, um, uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were sent home from WWE's European tour. The reason, the, said that the reasons were... Be, were because, um, as we saw during the SmackDown tapings, um, Zayn, uh, it was said that prior to um, the show, uh, Zayn and Owens uh, were told by Creative that they were supposed to, as, as they say in the business, feed uh, the New Day. Basically, what happened was uh, the match was going to happen, and then the New Day was going to beat down Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Well, Owens and Zayn got out of the ring before that could happen. Um, it was said that members of Creative were very furious. Um, you know, as we know, you know, with SmackDown doing it doggy style, a lot of people are furious. Um, it was even said that during, like the tour, like on the bus ride, um, that this this that this whole situation was actually kind of the last straw as far as um, disciplining them. Um, it was it was said that it was. Uh, um, said that uh, Kevin Owens was uh, complaining loudly on the bus about this situation with creative um, but then but, but but it was chalked up to simply venting and but whatever it was of course Vince had to sign off on it and he did um, he sent them both home now um, of course, um, it's been kind of interesting how Kevin Owens said spent his time since being sent home. He actually um, he he actually dropped in on a couple's uh, wedding dessert party at Disney World, um, and this guy was actually happens to be a huge fan, and he just dropped in. Um, and this, of course, has led to a bit of a Twitter banter with Randy Orton. Um, he's talked, or Orton talked about, of course he, dro Owens dropped in. It's a dessert party, and said so you waiting about Kevin's weight. Um, Kevin then fired back about, uh, Randy Orton vaping. Uh, Orton said, I quit vaping this week. You would know if you were here, if you were on the tour. And then he said, you know, well, you, you suck and that, but it's good that you quit vaping. Um, now... It's led to a lot of speculation as to whether or not the two are punished. Now, um, sorry, I'm do a lot of stuff here. Mm, I'm sorry. Now, 
as far as their punishment or if there has even been any. Now, according to reports, despite what happened on the European tour, Owens and Zayn are set to be at the Smack at the at SmackDown Survivor Series Go Home Show in Charlotte tomorrow night. Uh, where they will take on the New Day. They are still advertised to be there. It's supposed to still go on. Um, so whether or not, so if they do show up, then I guess everything was water under the bridge, and they just, you know, uh, so if they don't show up, it, it could be that um, they were suspended or, or whatever's going on. Um... And, of course, where does this lead into Survivor Series? As we know, Team SmackDown is set for Survivor Series. Where you've got Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, um, of course, John Cena adding to being added to it, and, of course, Shane McMahon as Team Captain. So, what happens? Um, you know, could it possibly be that Owens and Zayn screw Shane out of the Survivor Series match or screw it up for Team SmackDown altogether. Um, there's a lot of fans that are thinking this, um, you're wondering what could happen, if, if this could even be a work. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Um, you know, I know it's hard to, I know it's hard to still do kayfabe in a world in which we have the internet. I mean, clearly, you know, given the swirl of buzz of all that's supposed to happen tonight. But uh, it, it's still possible that they could, that it could be. They just said, hey, we're going to send you guys home because we're going to play something big. We're playing something huge. And so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where things go from there. Okay, um, moving on to, good lord, all the stuff surrounding Impact Wrestling. Um, as we know... Oh, excuse me. Um, it was announced um, this weekend, or like earlier, uh, like last week, um, Impact has officially moved its operations to Canada. Um, for those of you that don't know, Anthem's primary offices are in Toronto. Uh, and uh, as far as Bound for Glory and the recent tapings have been shot out of um, a venue in Canada. Um, not a great venue, mind you. The place doesn't even have running water, uh, from what I hear, is the place they're shooting it at. Um, now, Bound for Glory was, uh, from what I gather, there's a lot of fans that are divided on it. Like, like the Died in the Wool Impact fans thought it was really good. And from what I've seen, there have been some instances where... They're right. Um, a lot of great wrestling is still going on there. Um, but there is a lot of uh, a lot of stuff surrounding this past round of tapings, um, and one of a uh, couple of those being uh, showing how Anthem is hurting in the financial department to the fact where they could not where they were actually actively asking for people um, through a local wrestling, pro a local Ottawa wrestling promotion. Impact was looking for people to work, serve as a ring crew for Bound for Glory and through the tapings. Um, so that leads into a lot of questions. Um, and then there was a casting call for people to come to the arena and basically get paid to watch Impact. Um, they were paying uh, this... Uh, now, before, there's a lot of people that said, oh, this isn't true, oh, this isn't true. Um, I did see, I think it was IWNerd.com. Uh, uh, one of the guys actually responded to the ad, and it had all these details of what, of what you would be doing, um, that you might be asked to hold signs, that you would cheer and boo certain wrestlers. Um, but they did also say that uh, for these people to do their research and maybe even make their own signs. 
basically you're paying for fans is what is what was going on and um i i don't know what to say about that um I mean, simply put, why didn't Impact just give away tickets? You know, it probably would have been easier. I mean, damn cheaper. I mean, you, you, but, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of people are, frust are frustrated about it, what is going on as far as Impact is concerned. And that also lends in to the talents being frustrated themselves because of a certain individual getting his own dressing room. Now, um, from what I've gathered, their uh, space is at a premium there. Um, it's not a very big venue. Um, kudos to the, the filming team for making it look a lot bigger than the venue actually is. Um, but from, uh, from according to talent, and that a lot of people are frustrated because while everyone else has to share a dressing room with the men and the women and that, um, this show's least favorite wrestler, um, uh, actually gets his own dressing room. It, it does make little to no sense, but I guess, you know, it could be considering that literally, you know, much like myself, nobody wants to really talk about him being in existence. But this also lends to, um, I know as you, as we, um, as we know last week, um, Rockstar Spud, uh, his, he was, he was leaving Impact. Um, it was, it was, he decided to ask for his release. Um, he had been having s several visa issues, uh, with Impact not submitting the proper paperwork. And, I guess with him, the last draw was he was not booked not only for Bound for Glory, but not for the tapings afterward. So he decided, you know what, I'm done. And he has asked for his release. It is said that WWE is highly interested in him. And as soon as they can, they are going to add him uh, to the Cruiserweight division, which I think would be um, a great asset um, as far as that's concerned. Um it's something it's it's definitely as always marquee talent has really been helping out the division as of late okay. and this couldn't hurt um it's also said that hideo tommy um is being called up from nxt and will also be joining the cruiserweight division again another big name and could easily help that division but a really big name also i announced in this week's tapings at impact that his last match has occurred in Impact Wrestling, and that is the Cowboy James Storm. Um, everyone knows uh, Storm has been there since day freaking one, TNA original. Um, he did uh, have a couple matches. Um, let's see, is it last year? Or la yeah, last year in Impact Wrestling, or not in, in, in NXT, uh, but then decided um, after... Um, after um, then, still TNA, um, Dixie Carter offered him twice what he was being offered by NXT, and so he decided to go back, uh, reform beer money, and of course that lasted for all of, I think, like a month, uh, because right after that, Bobby Roode left, and well, we've seen where he's gone from there. So, uh, Storm coming back, or Storm's, and, and from what, um, sorry, a little excited, uh, from what sources have claimed, there is a contract waiting for him in WWE the moment he is able to come back. My guess is, um, since these tapings are supposed to go through the end of the year, um, he would he would have to wait until at least his last episode has aired uh, to, to show up on WWE television. Um, or, you know, through the end of the year. So probably... At the latest next year, next January, uh, we could see Storm like you know as a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble. That will always be cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, this also is another blow. I mean, it's but it does kind of show how Impact um, is trying to save money, and that is by getting um, cheaper 
in the talent. Okay, they can probably pay per appearance. That's all well and good. Eventually, you're not going to have the company, you know, at, at least, and the ratings you need to stay afloat. And it's already been said that this company is, you know, going, you know, out of money. So, um, again, we we don't know where this is going. It's kind of kind of getting starting to get a little shady over there in Impact Land. I know you've all been waiting for me to talk about this. The big moment is so close to coming. It's so close. We can feel it. We can taste it in the air. And that is... Uh, yeah, Roman's going to gonna come back. Um, of course, as many of us know, Roman Reigns has been out with the mumps. Um, or, you know, I think there's places that are still saying uh, viral meningitis. But um, from, what, from what it was reported, it was the mumps. Uh, which, of course, took him out of TLC. That's why... Uh, Kurt Angle replaced him as part of the Shield, um, and then during some of the European tour, you even saw Triple H uh, joining up with the with uh, Ambrose and Rollins. But from what I but uh, it is said that he will be there tonight um, at Raw um, on Saturday. Uh, pic uh, pictures of, there was pictures of him. Uh, with his daughter at a Georgia Tech football game. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, uh, Reigns went to Georgia Tech, was part of the Georgia Tech's football team uh, during college. And so, you know, a good time to reminisce, I guess, when you show your daughter around. You know, say, hey, I made something of myself. You know, this is, of course, back when he was just Joe. Some guy named Joe. Um, and, of course, with Roman coming back, it'll probably help set up um, the, it, it probably will happen, but, you know, it's still kind of, still kind of, uh, hinted at, uh, the match between, um, the Shield and the New Day, um, that will take place at Survivor Series. Um, as you know, it was kind of set up during, uh, Raw last week. Uh, when New Day interrupted the main event tag match, and because of their, and because of their um, distraction that they provided, uh, Sheamus and Cesaro ended up quick striking Rollins and becoming the new uh, Raw Tag Team Champions, part of that giant swap of titles. Um, and it's possible there could be another one, as Charlotte is set to face Natalia t uh, tomorrow night. Um, on SmackDown Live for the Raw for for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, it's whew, uh, could be very interesting that we see what we see what goes on. Um, but yeah, so I'm sure a lot of people are happy. Roman Reigns is returning tonight. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Guido Goes Off. As always, folks, I thank you for watching. Tell me what you think about the topics I covered. Are you looking forward to Ome uh, Jericho facing Omega? Um, do you think uh, Zayn and Owens are in trouble? Uh, what about what's going on in Impact? What about Storm leaving? What about Spud leaving? What about them not being able to pay a ring crew? And, of course, what do you think about Roman Reigns returning tonight to Raw? As always, let me know in the comments section below. And you can always talk to me via my social media. And, of course, if you have not uh, done so yet, like this video. Share it with your friends. And if you have not subscribed to the channel already, please do so. So, until next time, I am, I am the Guido. And I think we're done here. Might be done here. I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs>